This is Martin Shervington and welcome to Google+. In this video, I'll take you on a tour of the main features of Google+, as the social destination, and then we'll look at setting up your profile as well. Let's begin. This is home on Google+. Not only will you see content in your stream, but also you can communicate to people using this box. The first thing you can do is just type a message. Next, if you want, you can add photos. So click on add photos and you can either drag and drop photos in, which is what I'm going to do from the desktop like that. Or you could, if you wanted, upload photos from your computer or from your Google Plus photos. If you decide to go for your Google Plus photos, then you can choose from images you may already have uploaded or from Google Drive. These are the same photos you'll find by going to the sidebar and coming down and clicking on photos. Also, this box allows you to drop in a link, for instance, a website address. You can click to either search for a video on YouTube and upload that enter a URL, check out your own YouTube videos and upload one of those or even record or upload a video straight from your computer. The last icon is the event icon and if you click you can create an event. Once you've decided on the message you can come to the to section and decide to whom you'll send it. If you look in the to section you can decide whether to send it to public so that everybody will see it. You can send it to your circles or you can send it to individuals. Once you've decided, just click on share. And if you want to edit or delete, you come to the options menu in the corner of the post, you click and you can click on edit post or delete post and you have other options there as well. Circles on Google Plus are a way of organizing your contacts and to add somebody to circles you hover over their name and this brings up a hover card hover over add and then you can click to add them to a circle and if you want you could add them to several circles and if you want you can create a new circle and you can add this contact in as well as add other contacts later on into the same circle. You'll find your circles by coming across to the sidebar and going to people and in this section you'll have suggestions of people you can add in as well as suggestions on the side. You'll be able to see who has you in circles. You'll be able to discover content that Google thinks you may well want to add in as well as by clicking on your circles, finding your circles. In this section, you can order who is in what circle. And as you see, if you hover over, it will show up which circles they're in by becoming bolder. If you want to add them into a, another circle, you can drag and drop them in. And you can even select several and drop those all into a circle at the same time. You can also reorder the circles just by dragging and dropping those on the screen. If you want to add an additional person, you just search here and you can add people in that you want. Finally, if you want to create a new circle in the section, you can click and create a new circle. Also worth noting that you can add in entire circles. To do this, Click Add People, type a name at the top, and then click Create. Just to add, if you want to delete an individual before adding in that circle, you can just click on the X. Those contacts and that circle will then show up in your, your circle section. I've added Ronnie back in. And if you want, again, you can drag and drop and move it around and select a group and move those into different circles. 
Let's now return to Home by hovering over the sidebar and clicking on Home. It's worthwhile explaining that the content that you see in the All stream is largely dependent on the people that you have in your circles. There are a couple of extra things that will bring content into your stream which we'll cover in other videos. And each circle that you set up has its own stream. So you can click into any of those and you'll see content from the people from within those circles. For each of your circles, you have options on whether you want to receive notifications and whether you want the content to show in your home stream and also the volumes. Your notifications are a little like messages and you find them by clicking on the bell. And if you see there's a number, it means that you have unread notifications. You'll see the nature of the notification within the section. And you can click in to any of these and interact on the post. And if you want, you can leave a comment. You can also click share this post if you want others to see it. You can navigate between the notifications by clicking the up and down in the upper corner. You can go back to the main selection of notifications and see which ones that you haven't read yet. You can clear all and mark them all as read. Also, if you go in, you'll see that there's another little drop down in the upper corner and you have a few options there, but we'll come on to that in other videos. An extra tip on notifications is with the navigation, if you're on a desktop, you can use the arrows on the keypad to go right or left, as well as using J and K as keys to do the same thing. If the notification has an image or a moving image, as is this case, you can click on that and be taken to that particular image in the photo album of that person. And if it was a video, you'd be able to play the video directly from within notifications. When people add you to circles, you can click into that notification and you can hover over and add them to your circles. You can see who is in common. You can also click and if you wanted to block them, you could do from that menu. And if you click on the person's name, you'll be able to be taken to their profile. When somebody adds you back, you can click in and you can click say hello. From there, it brings up that familiar share box and you can send a message or you could add photos and links and videos or make it an event. And note that the circle that you added them in is also included. So when you message this person, those people will also be able to see that message. If you check the box, you can send an email to that circle. Use this very cautiously. And if you just want to send that private message to one person, then remove that circle by clicking on the X. And when you're ready, click share. When you've all caught up on your notifications, you'll see Mr. Jingles. And you can go to see what you read earlier by clicking on previously read to bring them back or return. You can click on Google Plus notifications to bring up a page where you can scroll down and see them all as posts. And if you click on view posts in Google Plus, that will return you to the home stream. In the same vicinity as your notifications, you'll find a share box which will appear all over Google+. Next to that, you can access your account and privacy settings. On the home screen, you'll find upcoming events to which you've been invited, and you can reply. You'll see people's birthdays, and you can click to send wishes, type your message, and then click share. And you also will find photos that you've taken, and you can click to view all. There's also another way of finding people to whom you're likely to relate. If you hover over the sidebar and go to communities, there'll be a selection of communities that you may well find interesting. You can search 
in the box here. And when you find something that you want to take a look at, click and it's likely you'll be able to join. Also worth noting, you can create your own community and the choice is between public and private. When you see a post to which you relate, you can plus one it, which lets other people know. You can type a message and press post. You can click to share the post. This then brings up a box where you can add a comment and then come down to the to section and you can decide who to send it to before you click share. Really important for you to know that if you do a plus sign and then start typing the person's name, the options will come up as to who you can send it to. This is going to send them a notification. So when you type the message and press post, they receive that notification. And if you wanted to edit, you can click on edit and change that I'll add a smiley face. Or if you want to, you can click delete comment and it disappears. If you want to see who plus one to comment or shares a post, then click on the activity that flips the board and you'll be able to hover over the individuals and see the hover cards or you can add them into circles this way and when you're ready you can flip the card back. If somebody receives a notification is going to depend on their settings and your settings are found by hovering over the side and going down to settings. The first setting to look at is who can send you notifications. So you click and you decide if it's anyone or your circles, for instance. And then the next one is who can comment on your posts. And again, you choose from the options. There's another way to reach out and connect with people on Google+, and that's called Hangouts. And you'll find your Hangouts by clicking on the green icon. If you haven't signed in yet, then click Sign In, and that will bring up a list of contacts from within your circles. Whether you can hang out with somebody is going to depend on their settings. But if you click, it will bring up a box and you can then type a message and press return and that sends them a message. If you want, you can add more people to a Hangout and this is the group chat aspect of a Hangout and click on that icon and then either choose an individual or you could choose a circle. And if you want, you can start a video call just by clicking on the icon for video call. You can customize who can hang out with you by clicking on the drop down and then choosing customize new invites. This will take you to your settings page. From here you can decide which circles can hang out with you or send you a request as well as an option for everyone else that's outside of your circles. You can start a new hangout by clicking in the new hangout and then type in the name or circle and just as an example, as I invite myself, when I click on the video call icon, this will bring up the video call aspect of a Hangout. And it will call that person and show if they're not available. You can also add more people to the video call by clicking on Invite People. There's another type of Hangout called a Hangout on Air. And you'll find that by coming across to the Hangouts on the sidebar. Hangout on Air enables you to broadcast to the world or to a private group, and you can start one by clicking Schedule a Hangout on Air. On the sidebar, you'll see that you have Pages, and if you click, you'll see the pages for which you're a manager, and you can click to create a page and choose from one of the options. If you click on local, you'll see reviews you've done from places around the web. There's a list called what's hot and recommended, which may well appear in this stream, and you can tell by the flame in the corner. If you want more of this content, you come across to what's hot and click. Just underneath your settings, you'll see you can Click to send feedback to Google. 
as well as take a tour, click which region that you want to say you're from, and click for help. Returning now to the stream, you'll see that there's a number, and if you click, that will show you the new posts and load those up. If you click question mark on your keypad, it will bring up a list of shortcuts. On many posts, you'll see there are hashtags, and you can click on these hashtags to flip the cards and to find similar content. And you can navigate through, going right and left. At the top of the page, you can see that you can search within Google+, and also, if you click on this icon, you can access Google Search, Google Play, Gmail, Drive, Google Calendar, as well as YouTube and many other services when you click More. Looking now at a post from the Dalai Lama, if you click on his image, that will take you to his profile, where you can see the content he's posted. As you can see, they've got a very friendly photo. Now, if you don't replace the default image, you have what's known as a blue head. To visit your profile, to change this, you can click on your name, your image, or you could click on the sidebar to go to your profile. From there, you click the icon, and you can either select one from the computer or just drag and drop an image in, or you can add one from existing albums. Then select the area you want to display, and when you're ready, click Set as Profile Photo. Next, you're going to want to change your cover photo. So click, and you can choose one from a gallery, or you can upload. Everyone's profile has an About section, and the first thing you're going to want to do is tell your story. And you can do this by clicking in Edit, and put in a tagline, to best describe you. Then put some introduction, and you can include bold and italics and underline, and you can even add in some bragging rights. And all of the time, you can decide who sees this content. When you're ready, you click Save. Let's now take a look at people. If you click on Edit, you can decide whether you want people to see how many have you in circles, and uncheck if you don't, and you can decide who specifically sees who's in your circles. And you can even choose by the circle, or you could display the information publicly. When you're ready, click Save. You can then apply the same principle to all of the other sections. Just click on Edit, put in the content you want, and then decide who you want to see it. Let's now have a look at links. If you are a contributor to a website, so let's say you write on a blog, it might be yours, it may be somebody else's, then you want to make sure it's listed in this section, as this informs Google Plus that you are a writer for that website. Now, there need to be a two-way link back from the website to your Google Plus profile, and that will be done by the web developer, uh, in order for something called authorship to be set up. Google Authorship enables your profile picture to appear alongside the content that you publish if you have a clear headshot and you've been tagged. To do this, click on the image and you'll be given the option to tag yourself. And you'll know if you've been tagged because when you hover over, it will show a surround and your name will be there. When you're on anyone's profile and you want to go back to home, hover over and click on home. That was an introduction to Google+. Click on the annotations at the end of the videos and you can be taken through the rest of this free course. This is Martin Shervington. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel and also check out plusyourbusiness.com if you're looking to use Google+, for business.